Hi there, I'm JT. Welcome to another campsite review from me here at Campervan Journey. And this video comes to you from Utopia La Clairie in the French Alps in Le Rosier, just on the outside of Briançon. It's a long campsite, it's about a quarter of a mile from one end to the other. The river is just down alongside me and you can pitch right next to it if you have a small tent. So if you enjoy the sound of running water, being pitched right next to one, the river would be absolutely beautiful, I imagine. But it does require having just a little tent as the space for pitches along here is pretty narrow. One of the things that we love about coming to these sites is just the fact that you are, you feel very, very close to nature. So obviously we're right by the river. Our pitch is actually within the pine trees. And then just on the edge of the site, you've got the full glory of the mountains. Even on a morning like this morning, it's a little bit overcast and a bit chilly. The mountains still look spectacular. Well worth the trip from the UK. Even though we are in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of the forest, right on the edge of the river, there is good access to electric hookups. We've also got a mixture, as you'd expect, at a Utopia site of the trapper tents and the cabins. The cabins here appear to be new. And having read a couple of the local guides, it does make reference to them being new for the season. So some of the chilly evenings we've had here, and it has been, we're in August at the moment, it's been five or six degrees at its coldest. You'd certainly be grateful of the wood burners inside the cabins. And some of the trapper tents also have a wood burner. Last night it was about 13, 14 degrees, which is what you'd expect, which is fine and comfortable in a tent. I think the swimming pool here at La Clare wins the award for the most epic view of all the sites that we've stayed at. Who wouldn't want to enjoy a swim in this pool surrounded by the views of these amazing mountains? The pool's not huge, so it does get quite busy. And at 1.52 meters deep, it's relatively deep for children as well. And it's the same level all the way through. So there is a little splash pool for toddlers. At all of the other Utopia locations that we've stayed at, they have a central lodge or central hub um, where you can sit and relax. Um, they don't have that here, which I think is really strange, especially as you're in the mountains and the weather can be a bit inclement at times. What we have got is this very large sort of covered um, canvas covering the outside which gives a nice shelter but it's it's still open um, but this is the central location for the evening activities sitting and having a beer and then there's a little snack cabin behind me where you can order espressos, pizzas, beer, wine, all sorts of different things. But I do think it's a little bit odd that there isn't a proper enclosed building given that we are in the mountains. So the chap who delivers the bread has just left uh, behind me and uh, so you can order fresh bread, croissants, pastries every morning uh, at the little snack bar. Um, they come from one of the local um, boulangeries. Often when we stay at these sites, I like to cycle out to boulangerie and just uh, go and experience buying from direct from them. Uh, here, the nearest boulangerie is uh, a little ride away, it's sort of 15, 20 minutes ride. So um, it's a bit further than perhaps I'd, I'd want to do every morning, but having it delivered here is great. 
We've also got um, alongside the ball court, the children's play area, the pool, and obviously lots of walks and cycleways. Um, because the campsite is so big, Harry and I were able to cycle around the campsite yesterday morning. We actually did four miles just doing some circuits of the site. So it's a big um, area that it covers. But we've got this fantastic ball court as well. And we've seen kids out here playing late into the evening uh, every night. But uh, for football, basketball, volleyball, badminton, all sorts, it's a great, great facility that they've got. Often see these in French towns and villages as you drive around the country. So I'm not sure if this is Hootopia's property or whether it belongs to the village itself. But certainly we've seen kids from the campsite enjoying themselves here. So it certainly keeps you fit, uh, this campsite. So I've just walked all the way from our pitch up to our to the recycling and rubbish area. You want to put your rubbish out every night because there's wildlife foraging around when you stay at these campsites. So just as a top tip, empty your bins. Otherwise you'll find that uh, somebody's emptied your bin for you, generally with four legs. But uh, from our pitch to the recycling area, it's a good quarter of a mile each way. So good little workout. But the reward once you get here and unload your rubbish is again, fabulous views. So just outside the entrance to the site, uh, there's a bus stop. Um, and some local information. One thing that we found in this particular area of France is that there's a lot of these little libraries. So they've got shelves or cupboards with books available for swap. So if you can read French and you want a free book, it's a good place to do it. But having the bus stop right close to the entrance of the site is convenient, obviously, if you want to get into town or to one of the other villages in the valley without using your car. And the River Claire running next to the campsite and looks beautiful in whatever weather. And then just to give you an idea of where we are, just in the south east corner of France, and just over that mountain is the Italian border. So the office behind me has got a little tourist information um, hub, um, ability to buy some essentials, so a few essential food supplies, and then some books and maps that some you can buy, some you can borrow, and some games as well. It is a big site, as I said, so from here, to where we are, which is over here. So it's a good quarter of a mile walk. There's about 200 pitches all together with the different um, cabins, the Canadian tents, and obviously normal traditional camping tents. And if you fancy some wild camping, there's a big field out the back. Which Three main sanitary blocks mixed amongst the campsite pitches themselves. Um, they're all fairly basic, to be fair. Um, pro probably do with an update. The ones up in the lodge, or at the central office and reception, are very clean, very modern, um, very nice. There has been some problems with uh, consistent hot water supply, drainage of the showers as well. Sometimes they've been blocked. And unfortunately also running out of uh, toilet paper as well so again except that it's the time of the year it is busy but uh, if there was one improvement I'd suggest that a little bit more frequent it seems to be here they're only checking sort of maybe twice a day they could probably do a, an extra check in the middle on a service but if there is a problem to be fair they have been coming out quickly to try and rectify it so but it just requires somebody to tell them there's a problem so one of the things that is quite different to some of the other sites that we've stayed at, and this is because it's a wooded forest site, I guess, is that the pits, pitches aren't clearly marked out. So you don't have 
the same division with your neighbours that you might have in some of the traditional ones. So some of the sites that we stayed at, the last one that we stayed at at Unon, were sort of hedged on a couple of sides and certainly there are other places that we've stayed where you've got a clear hedge boundary between you and your neighbours. Now that does give a little bit more privacy, certainly if the weather's bad as well, it can give you a bit more shelter. But here you can see that uh, just generally you're parked and pitched in the trees in a fairly, although the sites are numbered and marked out, they're not sort of, aside from a, a number post on the ground, there's no clear area as to where your pitch is. And then if you want to be a little bit away from it all completely, there's this big field at the end of the site with a beautiful view of the mountain behind you, where you can pitch up there are limited services here. So there's a couple of electric points, but the whole point of being out here is that you are disconnected. So as we often find when we're traveling around France and staying in these campsites, that there's a lot of nationalities, which is one of the things I really enjoy, really like about is not hear the chatter of all sorts of different languages but there's Spanish, German, French, Italian, Dutch, I think that's everybody and then but just a few English families and obviously it's quite a long way to come from the UK but I think it's definitely worth it. So would we come here again and stay here again? Absolutely, no problem, no shadow of a doubt. Would we stay here for a week? I'm not sure we would if we were to come again. Um, if you're into all your high intensity activities, so your mountain climbing, your kayaking, your paragliding, your rock climbing, all those sorts of things, there's loads and loads of things to do. But if you're not quite into all that and you, you can't guarantee the weather, then having perhaps three or four days here at a stretch before moving on, I think is probably the, the tops. But then well, that's obviously all down to personal preference. As a site, really enjoyed it. When Harry and I were cycling around the campsite uh, track yesterday, one of the things that really sort of nailed it for me was that he stopped just here, totally unprompted, and looked across at the view. and just looked back at me and said, Dad, what an amazing view. And that, to me, just hits the nail on the head as to what camping somewhere like this, as a family, is all about. And there we are, back at our pitch. So I hope you've enjoyed that walk round of the campsite here at Hootopia La Clarie. Uh, if you did and you found value in it, please remember to hit the button to like and subscribe, follow our journey on our channel here at Campervan Journey. There's plenty more videos of all the places that we've been and stayed with our uh, Volkswagen California Campervan. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, which may be somewhere else in France or maybe at another campsite or somewhere completely different very, very soon. Thanks for watching.